July 9th, 2020 meeting of the Town of Southampton Planning Board in accordance with the Governor's Executive Order 202.1 and until further notice, all of the board's meetings will be held remotely via video conference. So we ask the public to continually check the town's website for updates and new information. So would you please join in for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, of America. And to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> we have four public hearings this evening. We have applicants and members of the public standing in via Zoom, which is being moderated by CTV. Charles Surgeon will be muting and holding the speakers in a virtual waiting room until it's their time to give testimony before the board. A reminder that applicants, agents, and members of the public speaking should state their name and address for the record. A further reminder that despite the Zoom environment, all comments should be directed to the board and not to other participants. <clears throat> the link to participate in this meeting via Zoom can be found on the town's website. This meeting is also being live streamed on the town's website on the town clerk's meeting portal. Public comments can be made via Zoom, by email, or by uploading them to the town clerk's portal on the planning board's page. You will see that on the page, page a button you can click to upload your comments. Board members who must recuse themselves from any application will state so on the record and will be removed from the meeting until the end of the hearing. Unless otherwise stated at the end of each hearing, these applications will remain open for written comments from the applicant and the public until July, I don't have that date. It's 30 days, right? 30 days, correct. So that goes into August 9th. To August 9th. These comments can also be made by email or by uploading your comments on the town clerk's portal under the planning board meeting page. Additionally, in accordance with the governor's orders, these hearings will be recorded, transcribed, and will be made available to the public. So the first order of business is number one, GTB Real Estate Group. Claire, that's yours. Um, can we just do a roll call? Oh, we need a roll call. Phil, sorry. <laughs> I was ready to jump in. Blaine is here. I just, uh... I just stopped this video because he was recused. So. Chair LaFaro. Present. Vice Chair Finnerty. Present. Secretary is here. Board Member Burke. Present. Board Member Long. Present. Board Member Zuccarelli. Present. And Board Member Blaney. And Brian and my I heard him. He's here recusing himself for the first <laughs> application. Well, we have a full board. Ready to go. Thank you. Claire, do you want to? Sure. Kathleen, we have jurisdiction? We do, yes. Great. Please take notice that in accordance with the governor's executive order number 202.1, a pre-submission conference will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, July 9th, 2020 at 6 p.m. via video conferencing to consider the pre-submission application entitled GTB Real Estate Group. The site plan application is for the demolition of an existing building, former nightclub, and to construct a new restaurant and an 18-hole miniature golf course situated on a 2.4-acre parcel located in the motel zoning district located at 91 Montauk Highway, Hamlet of West Hampton, Suffolk County Tax Map Number 900-356-1-26.1. And who is the applicant representing here? Is this Carl Benincasa? It is. Hold on. There I am. Hi, everybody. Hi, Carl. Nice to you all, How are you? Madam Chair. Um, as Claire mentioned, this is an application for a site plan approval and special exception approval at 91 Montauk Highway in West Hampton. The site is just west of Montauk Highway's intersection with Seabreeze Avenue. It's a 2.4 acre parcel in the motel zone, and it's currently CO'd. The structure is currently CO'd for a two-room apartment, restaurant, bar, nightclub, op and open front restaurant. It's a 6,235 square foot structure. The current um, occupancy rating is set by the fire marshal is 584 people. 
and the surrounding community absent the property directly to the northeast, which is another motel property, is our uh, 40 single family residence. Uh, we are proposing two uses on the property, which is permitted in this zone, 40,000 uh, 40, square feet per use. So we have the square footage to have the two uses. I think probably the first uh, thing we should do is go over the special exception standards that we're asking for the um, miniature golf uh, course use. And then we can talk about the site as a whole. Um, the standards is set in 331.62.7. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six standards. The first is that it comply with the definition of a miniature golf course, and this certainly does. It'll be limited, limited to putting, and it'll be 18 uh, small holes traditionally uh, utilized for miniature golf in, in succession, starting at one, two, three, and on to 18. The, um, it shall not occupy more than one acre on the property. In fact, it's occupying about a half an acre. Uh, this, the third standard is with respect to uh, side, front side and rear yard setbacks. Now this board has authority under the special exception standards to vary uh, the side yard setbacks. Typically they are 50 feet in this zone. Um, typically are 50 feet in this zone. Excuse me, we're asking in the portion that borders the motel, the adjacent motel, we're asking for that to be reduced to 25 feet. We're accommodating that reduction with two forms of screening, one a solid six foot fence and the other six to eight foot uh, evergreens planted. One of the reasons, the rationale is to put it in as far into that section as possible, there, thereby making the location of the um, miniature golf course as far from residential uh, premises as possible. Um, and that's why we are asking for that accommodation. The rest of the site complies with setbacks. Subsection D of the section addresses the fact that uh, transition yards, and again, we are, this is a transition parcel as across the street is uh, residential R40, and uh, we comply with all transition yards. The third is that a lighting plan be provided, the, I'm sorry, the fifth is that a lighting plan be provided uh, to accommodate concerns of the neighborhood. Uh, we are certainly open to complying with all uh, lighting conditions in the code and, and eager to work with the board to address that. And the fourth talks about screening. There's actually three forms of screening in this plan. And certainly a more formal landscape plan is forthcoming as the application proceeds. But about three quarters of the property is screened by four to six foot evergreens as depicted on the site plan before you. The, uh, the section adjacent to where we are asking for the reduced setbacks has an additional six foot uh, solid fence. And then along Montauk Highway, we are proposing uh, six, uh, four to six foot artificial dunes planted with uh, beach grass as a form of uh, screening for the on-site activities and of course the on-site parking. In addition, so that, that's, that's the special exception standards for the miniature golf course. Again, is our position that we, we, are, we do meet and accommodate those standards. Uh, next, we'll draw attention to the permitted use, which is the restaurant. Um, as you know, the existing uh, facility is a 6,235 square, square foot restaurant, apartment, nightclub, uh, and bar. We are proposing a 2,462 square foot restaurant. The restaurant that was submitted, uh, Claire, I don't know if you have the original submissions as to the uh, elevations. Um, it's sort of that modern looking building. The applicant, my client, is moving away from that. And I submitted to Claire some images of kind of the sort of building we're looking for now. The floor, the footprint's not gonna change. It's just the, the facade of the building that we're looking to change. That's the existing site. So I think if you scroll down on that, you'll see them. Like this? That, something like that. Again, the, the, this, the vision for this site is a, sort of an ode to the to the area, the community, the, the beachy nature of the Hamptons. And we're looking to have a, a beachy feel for this, um, for this, uh, the, this site. Can you uh, go back and identify the site because you just showed something. I, ha I had it somewhere else. This, this, these are examples. You're looking at examples. Yeah, this, I know, but we're, we're, we're currently on the site. Well, here's the key map. It's in West Hampton. This yeah, is Motel. This is Bowie One. Is across oh. the street. 
It's across, across the screen. Buoy, buoy one. Thank you. That's all yeah. I need. I just okay. Okay. That's well, you know, actually, it's immediately across. This is buoy one up there. It's immediately across from that um little farm. The farmer, the farm stand. The farm stand you did, did. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem. Thank you so much for. I just needed a reference point. Uh, so again, the the goal is to make this sort of feel uh, beachy. Um, it's an ode to the to the community, uh, certainly the Hamptons. And so the uh, this sort of um, architecture, this sort of design is is what the applicant would prefer. Again, the the dunes are reminiscent of that. The the theme of the miniature golf course is going to be reminiscent of that. Um, I think it's important next to talk about parking. So under its current use. Uh, there is the calculation that we've done demonstrate that you may that you likely need 400 plus spaces because a nightclub requires two spaces uh, for every three people. Um, so an analysis of the site shows that there's pr probably likely 93 spaces available. So you're looking at parking that's re relatively one fourth of what's required for the current use. We're proposing parking that is a cop that is um, consistent with what's required, conforming parking. Um, and we're doing that uh, through an analysis, uh, through a shared parking analysis. So there are 54 proposed sites on this lot. If you look at the, what's required for the restaurant use, you have a 72-person um, occupancy for that restaurant, one per three people, uh, three customers is required under the code. So that equals 24 spaces plus four for employees. So the restaurant needs 28 spaces. The miniature golf course, it's two people for every uh, hole. So that's two times 18, which is 36. However, we're estimating that one quarter of the people that will be using the golf course, the miniature golf course, are also gonna be using the restaurant. So if you reduce that requirement by 25 under the shared parking code, that comes down to 27 spaces with one for an employee operating the golf course for another 28 spaces, a total of 56 spaces, and that's what's uh, proposed on this plan. The parking lot itself, we would want it to be uh, a gravel parking lot, uh, and we're certainly willing to work with the engineers on the development of that. But um, again, it's, it's an ode to the theme of this, um, this restaurant. We want it to feel like the beach, sort of informal and fun. Um, so uh, the applicant would prefer a gravel parking lot. And there are several ways we can do the gravel in a way that accommodates um, handicap parking. There is uh, a, a bonding agent that can be used that would make the handicap parking completely compliant. Finally, I think it's important to point out that um, the comp plan, both in 1999 and, in, and the 2004 West Hampton Area Study both support uh, this use. In 1999, the comprehensive plan said uh, for this zone in this area, we want to promote greater opportunities for resort-oriented and shoulder season recreation, including golf, hiking, bicycling, boating, et cetera, but without compromising the town's natural or scenic resources. The way this is planned, uh, the theme of the rest of this um, site, I think, fully conforms with what's what was recommended under the 99 comp plan. As far as the 2004 West Hampton area study, it proposed two things, a farmer's market, and in the event that a farmer's market wasn't realized, a lobster roll type restaurant food stand, similar to the family and tourist friendly facilities in Montauk and Bayden Hollow. And again, that is exactly my applicant's uh, vision, the applicant, my client's vision for this site. Do they have a beachy name for the restaurant? I, I'm, I'm guessing that's coming, yes. Carl, uh, I'll jump in. My only concern is with the, with the, um, the mini golf, uh, if you sit in a night, they typically, um, they typically utilize these tall lights, these floodlights. Can you talk about the lighting for the miniature golf? So a full lighting plan has yet to be developed, but we will certainly in, uh, incorporate any concerns you have and comply with dark skies and all and all of that. Um, I, I understand your concern. You know, a lot of when you picture miniature golf courses at night, you picture them sort of illuminated like a beacon. Um, but I'm sure we can. We'll, we're more than happy to work with you on ways that are code compliant and respectful of the neighborhood. Okay, Claire. Claire can give you some guidance on what we're looking for. Of course. As far as yeah. Definitely. Uh, 
Paul, is there going to be a separate um, concession, food concession or restrooms to the golf section? No, the plan has everything um, accommodating that all those facilities in the in the restaurant. Okay, so anyone golfing would have to use we couldn't get ice cream or whatever or separate using separate restrooms in the golf area. They're going to go into the restaurant. They, they, yes, there there would be a there would be a bathroom accommodating them, and access would not be difficult. But that's that's the plan. Okay. Pro also touch base with the engineer. I mean. The term gravel parking lot, it, it, people have different ideas of what it constitutes. The, the engineering department will certainly allow for an aesthetic accommodation, but it would still be an, a rolled uh, asphalt, a, a rolled stone, what they call a rolled stone, where they roll out the impervious surface tar, and then they, they overlay it with the gravel, so you still get that gravel look, but still be impervious. It'd still be an impervious surface. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, is there anyone uh, wanting to speak to this in the waiting room? Charles? I am checking. There's no way for me to know. They would just have to raise their hand. So they all have a way to raise their hand. And I don't see any, so. As of now, I see none. One second. I have one. Okay. Charles, there's somebody with a Q and A as well. That's what I'm Can looking you see at. That? That's what I'm okay. looking at. Embog Hosian. Hello. Hello. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, yes we can. Hi. My name is Michael Bogosian. I live at 4 East Ridge Court, basically across the street from the proposed site where the old sandbar or surf club used to be many years ago. So I, I, I do have a couple of reservations about it. A couple of things I think are great ideas, but I do have reservations as well. Um, number one, uh, the gentleman before used the word nightclub. He used it only one time. He used basically a restaurant, uh, more of like a surf club, a surf uh, lobster roll type of joint like John Scott's. That's kind of the feeling that I think he's saying it's gonna be. I don't know if it's going to be a sit down with waiter service or not, or waitress service. Uh, I don't know if all of you have been here we're here in the 80s when the surf club or some of the other names or Gene, right after Gene's sandwich shop left and then it became different clubs. But the amount of accidents and a couple of people that were hit crossing the street on Dune Road, uh, on the Montauk Highway. I like the idea of the miniature golf for the children of the neighborhood, uh, for the tourists during the summer. I think it's a great idea to have that. I like the idea of having a lobster roll type of setting that the gentleman described. But when he used the word, the word nightclub one time and used restaurant the other times, I would like him to expound a little bit on the word nightclub and its usage. Number two, I would like to know how far off is the restaurant and the miniature golf course from Montauk Highway. What is the buffer off Montauk Highway when you're dealing with a miniature golf course? Are the children gonna be safe enough if one child runs away from his parents? Is it far enough or will they be completely enclosed by the miniature golf area or the restaurant that they can't get to Montauk Highway? So it's a safety concern is what I'm asking. Okay, well maybe we can get Mr. Benincasa to respond to those, Carl. 
Sure. So I mentioned the nightclub in the context of what's currently CO'd. There's no plan for a nightclub here. This is going to be a waitress service restaurant. So nothing that with no, there's nothing, no part of this plan that has to do with a nightclub. That's what's in the current CO. So that we're actually moving away from that. Okay. Um, as to the uh, cleric, is possible to put up? The uh, yeah, I can put it back up. It's 50 feet from the um, the setback for both, right? 50 feet. From the from beach from the middle. Oh, from the zoning. That's from the transition zone. Ah, so what is the setback from the property line? Uh, I would say approximately 30 from the property line. And then did you say there was going to be fencing and a buffer? So yes, uh, there's a buffer. Fencing as well? There's fencing in the portion that borders the, you can see it's darkened in the site plan. It's the portion that borders the uh, restaurant and parts of, of Booker. Uh, there's the, the screening is going to be a, it's going to be a four to six foot high dune that separates anyone on the golf course from Montauk Highway, um, which, which we planted with uh, uh, material look that looks like beach grass. And then or that's the plan anyway. And then four to six foot in height, uh, evergreens throughout the rest of the property. So there's really three different distinct forms of screening. The dunes that sort of buttress uh, that, that, buffer between Montauk Highway and where people would be playing on the golf, the evergreens through about three quarters of the property. And then that, in that one area where we're asking for reduced setbacks there, that's going to be um, the, um, the solid six foot solid fence. Okay, thank you. I think that, that addresses Mr. Bogosian's concerns. That's one concern. The other concern is I'm back to the nightclub right now. What are the hours of the restaurant what, what are the hours of the restaurant? I don't think a determination has been made as to the hours of the restaurant yet, but it's going to function like a, your typical restaurant. There is no plan whatsoever for a nightclub there. Okay, okay, so John Scott's is not considered a nightclub. It's considered a restaurant, correct? Oh, I don't know what John Scott's is considered. Uh, John Scott's, years ago, Definition: the, the code was vague um, regarding nightclubs and restaurants. So a lot of these clubs went in under the re old restaurant C of O. That that code has long since been tightened up. So once a restaurant is C of O, you can never turn. You can never get a nightclub use uh, sliding in there like like the older restaurants used to be able to do. Okay, so you have live music. I'm assuming you would you would have live music. Live music. I mean, uh, uh, to the extent a restaurant would have live music, I don't know if there's any. No, there's been no mention of live music in my discussions with the applicant. I'm okay. sure and the restaurant is permitted to have that. Uh, yeah. I, all I'm concerned. I, I lived through the years in the early '80s when there were many clubs, and I'm not against. Well, we all went to clubs ourselves when we were younger. That's not the concern of mine. The concern was the noise level was to a point where at that time, John Rafferty was one of the owners of, or one of the people who ran, I think it was called the Sandbar. I, I can't remember the name of it. But the decibels were so loud that the sheets on my bed would vibrate. And it's not an exaggeration. I'm just concerned about the noise pollution and the safety of the kids. That's who are playing miniature golf and I'm safety and the safety of the people who are going in and out of the establishment. You know, the noise is a, is a major thing. And I mean, if the restaurant closes at 10, 11 o'clock, that's fine. But if it goes to four o'clock ordinance, to me, I would, I have an issue with it. And I'm, and I'm sure that many of my neighbors on East Ridge Court would agree with the noise ordinance. And I, if you look, I don't know if we go back on records, but the amount of police calls that were made on weekends to go down to those uh, clubs is, you can't count the amount of times that the police were called in for the noise. And I'm sure the people who live on Booker probably feel the same way. Yep. So okay. what, I, what, I, what I can say is that is certainly not the vision for this site, uh, certainly not the vision for my client. 
as I mentioned, we're, we're looking at what was recommended in the comp plan, which is a family and tourist friendly place. And what you're describing would not be that. So, so I, I like the first family. Oh, can I stop you? I'm sorry. You you were to address your concerns to the board and then the board, if they feel the question can be answered by the applicant, they can answer it. So I'm, I'm trying to stop the back and forth. Okay, but if you had any more comments, I mean, I noted your, the noise, which is a new comment that you had. So if you have any other comments that I could just jot down or focus and ask the board, you know, address them to the board. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do you know what the hours are? Uh, I, want, do you I know, know the that hours? Too. Do you know the hours of the miniature golf? Okay. Hours of miniature golf. Good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do we know how, how large the seating arrangement is in, in the restaurant board? He said 72 right now, 72. occupancy. Okay. So those are good. Those are all good questions. I apologize for... Uh, for no, it's, it just uh, it's a back, it back and forth starts. And yeah, then, no, I understand. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Easy to do with a Zoom uh, environment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bogosian. You're welcome. Uh, Charles, I have, is, I have no other hands. So. You have no no one else. There was a question. Did someone? That was, that, that was that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those were his questions. Yep. Okay. So um, we can close with a thirty day written comment period. A motion by motion. Dennis, second by Glorian. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstention, six in favor, one recusal. John Blaney. Great, thank you. I'm bringing him back. Bring him back. All right. We'll move on to Bridge Petroleum. Hi, everybody. Um, Bye, Carl. Bye, Carl. See you, Carl. Um, Madam Chair, we do have notice for number two. Great, thank you. Claire, are you reading it into the record? I am. Please, oh, um, so the applicant for this one um, would be John Bennett and Charles Southard would be the two people to let in as far as I know. And maybe John could tell if there's anybody else. Okay, I'll read it into the record. Yep. Please take notice that in accordance with the governor's executive order number 202.1, a pre-submission conference will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, July 9th, 2020 at 6 p.m. via video conferencing to consider the pre-submission application entitled Bridge Petroleum. The site plan application is for the demolition of an existing gasoline station and the construction of a uh, 1,575 square feet convenience store slash gas station with an overhead canopy on a 0.376 acre parcel located in the HO zoning district at 535 Montauk Highway, Hamlin of East Quag. Suffolk County tax map number 900-341-1-52. Okay, Mr. Bennett, you're on. Thank you. Um, this is uh, uh, an application as Claire uh, uh, read to you for a, a, a replacement service station, uh, amongst other things, moving back some of the pumps uh, where there is one and a what I would call I guess a gro sort of like a grocery store automotive store convenience store um, it's located in an HO zone and as I said it's uh, currently improved by an existing service station it's going to be a massive improvement to the corner of this property which is on the I guess the southeast corner of Montauk Highway and Walker Avenue if the property right now um, I'm sure everyone's driven past it, is essentially all hardscape. And there's just one big curb cut there. Um, so what we're showing you, uh, uh, proposing anyway, is uh, a really, you know, it's a modern engineered site plan with uh, plant aisles to be, uh, you know, buff buffered aisles, controlling ingress and egress, um, you know, a planting plan, a, a light, lighting site plan, all of the stuff that you typically look for to bring this uh, property back into, uh, well, to bring it forward to uh, more modern planning and, and site design. Again, right now it's a rather, uh, uh, you know, 
it's just an, an old gas station pre-existing non-conforming that is not surprisingly doesn't have any of the modern site plan elements that the, you would look for. Um, so we're, and by the way, there was a, a prior application um, that was before the board and the client came to us and I, I, I counseled them that I thought that the prior application was, was quite aggressive. So it, this, what you're looking at is an application that's much, much less to, uh, uh, should we hopefully be much less of a concern. It's a 1,575 square foot service station, grocery, uh, automotive parts, convenience store. When I say automotive parts, I'm just mean the sort of small accessory uh, automotive parts that you might see in a uh, uh, autom automotive related articles that you might see almost in like a, a, a car wash or something like that. I don't mean to overemphasize that. So the, the, um, the gas pumps are pretty close to the road right now. We're moving them back. Oh, we're not changing the number of them. We'll have a canopy, which is great for gassing up during inclement weather, but also enables those fire suppression systems to be housed in a way that is not unsightly. Um, so we think um, we're also, and, and, we're, and we're trying, although with not in terms of the use, because it's an HO zone, it's pre-existing non-conforming use, we're conforming with a lot of the stuff that you see in the HO standards. We're going to put off-street parking located in the rear, not in the front. Uh, the architecture proposed is more residential in appearance. Now the building is less than 3,000 square feet. It's 1575. The architecture is designed such that the front elevation facing Montauk Highway has the appearance of the main entrance. Coverage for roof structures less than 20%, or about 18%. Uh, and 60% of the property will be in, will now be, you know, not not excuse me, not more than 60% of the property will be impervious, impervious or paved service paved services. Now you have just one big hardscape there. Um, we have a buffer area along the real property line, and we submitted a landscape plan, a lighting plan. So although not in terms of use, because it's a pre-existing non-conforming use, which of course the, the property owner has the right to maintain, um, we are um, trying to bring it into the design standards that would be in the HO district. Uh, there's a little bit of relief that we have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals for, it's rather minimal. Um, we'll deal with that in the ZBA and we'll deal with any site plan issues, design issues, landscape, lighting, um, anything that the board has to, uh, you know, has to deal with uh, in due course. Um, this is a, the purpose of a public hearing is for the um, public to have comment. So I typically traditionally keep my comments to a minimal other than to give a skeletal outline of the uh, proposal, which is what I've done. Are there any questions the board? Um, Mr. Southard is waiting. I, I, he's the project he, architect, unless you have any, okay. right. unless you have any questions of him, I have him just, just in case you have any questions about the architecture or any of the site plan issues, but any questions from anyone? There seems to be two people with their hands up. Cindy McNamara. I'm Rob getting Rob. them. Yeah. Robin. Hello. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, you know, can, I'm. Can you just state your name, please? Oh, my name is Robin. Your name and address. Robin Rains, 525 Montauk Highway. I am adjacent to the Coastal Service Station. Mm -hmm. Okay. On Montauk Highway. Right. Um, so, one of my questions is understanding the delta between what they submitted before which I've seen great detail on, and what is now in submission. So I'd like to understand that, number one. And, um, and, and I, I requested, uh, that I, I didn't know anything about this hearing except for having been out at the house 
and seeing the sign there on the corner. So I would like to get that information. And um, also previously when I expressed concerns to my attorney, Barbara Rasmussen, I had, um, I had said, you know, what it was, you know, first of all, these gentlemen or women, you know, ladies, whoever the owners are, have done a beautiful job with the property. Okay. And I'm really happy that, that they are my neighbors who've done the beautiful work on that property to make it so much better than it was before. I too have been doing a lot of work on my property and I don't want to lose value on it. Right. So, um, I would like, you know, I just, you know, obviously want to understand what the screening would be like going forward. Um, for, for me to be on board with it being my neighbor going forward. And, um, and I, you know, I, I also, like if you're moving the tanks back from the street, then that means it's moving it closer to my house where my children sleep and closer to my neighbor who's, who is perpendicular to me on, you know, on the backside there. So, you, you know, but I, I understand Mr. Bennett's points about, you know, having the, the, the fire retardation be more attractive. And, you know, certainly I want more attractive. I am mostly concerned about screening more than anything else. And I'm concerned about hours, just as in the previous submission. And I'm concerned about, um, you know, just safety. And, you know, just that, you know, that I, I have what is, like a backyard oasis that I've built over the last 10 years of ownership. And, and I, you know, I, I just want really extraordinary evergreen screening and I want extraordinary neighborly engagement. And I just want to make sure that it's not like a Seven Eleven thing all night long. And I want to make sure that they're not, you know, you know, I'm sure there, there may be alcohol sales. I don't know, but I, like cigarettes, I don't want like people throwing cigarette butts in my yard and that kind of thing. And then I want to also add that I am a capitalist and I understand investment and returns. And I understand that I bought a, a little house right next to a little service station. So I just want to figure out how to be most neighborly and engaged and problem solving and allowing them to optimize what is a, an extraordinary little spot and this is where I go buy my gas when I am in East Quag, you know? So, you know, I just wanted to like lay all that out there and I wanna say I'm really open, uh, but I, you know, I do want protections along the perimeter of, the prop of what's my property. We get an aerial so I can see where uh, Ms. Ms. Rain's house is in relation to this. Is there an aerial? I've actually got it on Google Maps. You can see it perfectly. Yeah, that's it, right there to the left. Oh, do you want to you want to share your screen? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know I, I'm well, this shows a, this shows it pretty clearly. Yeah. Maybe maybe John, you can respond to. You mentioned it was an aggressive design before. It's been reduced. Um, difference now and then, and then screening. Yeah, I don't know what the uh, is a significant reduction. That's a, mm -hmm. a past application. I, I don't know what the numbers are, but I, what I will say to the speaker is I would welcome, since you're the neighbor, uh, you're, you're contacting uh, me at 283-9696, and we can, if there's a call for additional screening, the applicant has no interest in other, other than being a good neighbor. If you have design concepts for additional screening, more than happy to take them uh, back to, to our people and see if we can work something out that makes you comfortable because obviously uh, it's only in everyone's interest to have you happy with what's what's going on here. That, uh, that's great. I, I'll do that. I'll, please I'll, do. Please. I mean, I'm just, that's probably the best way to do it as opposed to trying to articulate. Yeah, I, mean, I don't want to bother anybody. I do want to point out, Mr. Bennett, that my attorney did speak to someone. I don't know who it was. And if you look at the corner of mm -hmm. Walker and Montauk, that's where the air used to be. There was never a vacuum. So you break look up. at the, like, uh, so if you look at the corner of Walker and Montauk, right at the street, that's where the air used to be. There was never a vacuum. The vacuum right now is at the back of the property with cars coming and going in the back of the property. 
And that's like, that's where I have my coffee. You'll see my deck right there. That's where my coffee, you know, my children swim in the pool. Uh, you know, it's, it, you know, somebody comes up and that, there was never vacuum before and now they have vacuum and, you know, somebody will come along and play some wretched white snake or something really loudly while they're okay. vacuuming. And if they were playing Sinatra, I probably wouldn't be bothered by it, but uh, it's, you know, that was a real like invasion of my quiet enjoyment of my property. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure that the, the moving of the air and the addition of the vacuum is actually even a legal thing that happened on that property. But I had asked my attorney about it and she said she talked to somebody about it. And the, I mean, that, you know, we'll talk about this offline, but I'm telling well, I you. Wish, if I may, I wish those comment, I wish those comments had been, had been brought to me. Those are the sort of the things that, okay. I, I absolutely will, will try to help you address, uh, okay. but I, I've never had any conversations with your lawyer who knows me, uh, okay. and I wish they had picked. She had picked up the phone and called me. Okay, we will make sure that that happens, or I'll call you because I'm not afraid to call anybody. So I'm, I'm okay. thrilled anytime. I'm thrilled anytime to to speak to someone who identifies themselves as a capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I am a left-leaning capitalist. Let's be clear about that. But I, no, you you know, I respect okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, that's Morgan. all I had to say, and I will. Uh, I will absolutely follow up with you, Mr. Bennett. Bye. Is Cynthia McNamara still wanting to speak? Yes, Cindy. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Cindy. How are you? I am the chair of the East Quag CAC. Um, I apologize. I only knew this meeting happened because my co-chair actually saw the notice at the gas station. Um, I didn't know coming into this what we were looking at, if we were looking at the same application as was prior, which our committee actually was completely against. Um, I'm happy to see it's something different. We, it seems to be more in line with what we wanted to see in the community. There are a lot of historical homes around this area. There's the park. Um, the intersection there is a dangerous intersection to begin with. So I think from, from what I'm seeing, it looks to be a lot of the issues that we brought up were addressed with this new plan. I would like to see more, um, some more information about what is being proposed, a more detailed plan, because from what we, you, you just put up on the screen, it's really hard to see what's there, but it definitely looks more in line with what we were envisioning for that site. I like that the, the building was brought forward on the property and is not right up against that neighbor in the back property line. Um, the parking issue seems to be addressed a little bit more. Um, there, there was a lot of things that we brought up and I had put them in the record on the previous one, which was the size of the convenience store, the height of the canopy, um, the increase in the number of the pumps, and then the lighting and the impact on the neighboring homes. So I'm glad that a, a, you know, a neighbor has spoken um, about what she wanted to see. Um, and I would, she can reach out to me if she wants. We're more than happy to work with any of the neighbors, but it was more like we were looking at that Bridgehampton gas station that was that more in line with the character of the Hamlet. Um, because it is, it is our main street and it is a very focal point right there by the park and that odd intersection that we have there. So if we could just see more um, information about it, that would be great. If, if somebody could forward me um, a plan or something so yeah. we could- If you wanna call me, again, if you also, if you wanna call me, uh, there's, there's, there's five or six sheets that are not, um, uh, that have not been displayed, which would be, except for I'm totally- uh, They're all online. <laughs> oh, they are okay. great. They're under the Hamlet okay. section. Every application is put online in its entirety. So, so all the all the site plans and all that are there. Right, exactly. Okay. So, but, but contact John also. Okay, yeah. so cause we were just, we were trying to get together and it's been hard with everything going on. We're trying to find somebody with a Zoom account so we're not limited to 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but it definitely looks more in line with what we had envisioned. And it definitely doesn't look as, dare I say, quickie mart as the previous plan. Um, 
So I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to see the changes. I'm happy to see that there were some things that we said taken into consideration. It does definitely look more like that gas station in Bridgehampton that we had that we had envisioned. Um, and I'll take a look and I'll make sure my my committee gets the rest of the the information. And you know, being that we have, I think you said 30 days to weigh in. We'll you know take it from there. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the room? Claire, that you see with a hand up? Uh, I don't. Do you trust? That's it. Okay. So, John, um, thank you for offering that. It's terrific. Um, do I have a motion to close with a 30 day written comment period? Motion. Robin, second by Glorian. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? I think we have a full board. Seven in favor. Thank you, John. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Moving on to number three, a Fire Star Holdings LLC. Um, we have notice, Madam Chair. We have notice. Great. Uh, Jackie, do you want to read? Yes. Into the record? Yes. Notice of a public hearing. Please take notice that in accordance with Governor, Governor's Executive Order 202.1, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, July 9th, 2020 at 6 p.m via video conferencing to consider the pre-application entitled Firestar Holdings, LLC. The pre-application consists of a standard plan with three lots on an 87,125 square foot parcel situated in the R20 zoning district and located within the high priority water quality improvement zone located at 70 Meeting House Road within the hamlet of Quayog. Suffolk County tax Net number 900-373-3-14.1. A transcript of said hearing will be provided at a later date and the public hearing public will have an opportunity to see and hear the meeting live and to provide comments. The public can watch the live meetings on the town clerk's website under the planning board meeting tab or participate through the Zoom app. If any interested, interested members of the public would like to provide comments on the public hearing, comments can be submitted to the planning board via mail, email, or uploaded to the town clerk's portal prior to the meeting where additional and updated information on ways to view and participate will be posted. In addition, the record will remain open after the public hearing for the submission of the written comments. Please check the July 9th, 2020 meeting agenda posted on the town clerk's website as the hearing date approaches for further instructions on how to access the virtual meeting and for any updated information. In the event of cancellation, this meeting, this application without further notice will be heard at the next planning board meeting. Jackie LaFaro, Chairperson, by order of the Planning Board of the Town of Southampton, Philip Keith, Secretary. Thank you. Wayne, this is, you're representing the application. Welcome. Ready? Yep. Okay, so good evening, board members. Um, we submitted an affidavit of posting and mailing, um, and we're here tonight for a pre-application for a subdivision. Um, the property, as mentioned in the notice, the northerly side of Montauk Highway, our meeting house road in uh, the hamlet of Quayog. Uh, Wayne, can, can you crank up your volume a little? I'm having trouble. I don't know if anybody else is. Um, Thank you. Can you hear it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can crank up your volume too, Phil. <clears throat> You're muted. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, that's better. Is that better? Um, in any case, we're here tonight for a pre-application um, subdivision into three buildable lots. The property is a two-acre parcel on the northerly side of Meeting House Road in the hamlet of Quayog. Um, the parcel is sort of a skewed from Meeting House Lane. Uh, it is 87,125 square feet. We did submit two alternative plans. Uh, the first plan is what we call our standard yield plan, and then we submitted an alternative uh, standard plan. We did ask for, and I believe the board did grant a, a waiver of the cluster requirement. As you could see on the aerial photograph that you had up in a moment ago, the property is totally surrounded by uh, development. 
um, basically in lots uh, consistent with the R20 zoning or even smaller. Um, there is one one acre parcel immediately to our east. The larger parcels in the neighborhoods are all the church parcels. Um, the first subdivision map you'll see is we provide um, a 20,000 square foot lot fronting on Meeting House Road. And it has a, a building envelope, a triangular building envelope. You can get a modest size dwelling in there. Uh, the two flags all meet the flag lot, flag lot policy, all over 30,000 square feet with a proposed common driveway um, that our client is willing to have all three lots share on the westerly side of the property. Um, and that plan is noted, if you notice in the uh, title block listed as plan A, uh, we also submitted a plan B, uh, and that plan um, essentially shifts the lot line on lot three, the lot fronting on Meeting House Road, to enlarge that to make a larger building envelope and taking away a little bit of lot area from the two uh, flag lots in the back. Um, it's still, each of them still will comply to zoning. However, it's your flag lot policy uh, for the two, you know, requiring one and a half times. Of course, um, this doesn't, um, we're not increasing yield or anything else in that case. All we're doing is by making those lots smaller in the back, making a, a better building envelope for the lot that fronts on the street. Uh, there is public water here. Um, and the, as you noticed, the character of the area, we're pretty much consistent. This board approved the subdivision just to our north uh, east two lot subdivision very uh, similar to this. Uh, the one thing that you did impose there were uh, a buffer along the street. Of course, it was a different street it was the, uh, to the north. Um, and you did actually impose a buffer along our north, uh, north easterly corner of our property on the back of their property as well. Other than that, um, we're available to take any questions or comments. Any questions? I like the alternative plan um, to give more square footage to that front lot. That might also allow for a possible buffer along that front lot as well, and a, certainly a better building envelope. That's essentially the thought process. We would, again, even with that lot, uh, both alternatives um, propose that they all share the common driveway, even though that lot has frontage on Meeting House Road. Any other questions? Charles, is there someone in the waiting room that wants to address this application? I see no hands. Oh, I do see a hand, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Matthew? You can Hi. speak. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hi, uh, nice meeting you all. Um, uh, I live on uh, 491 Montauk Highway, so just north of this um, um, planned uh, or, or proposed subdivision. Can you please um, state your name? I'm sorry, Matthew Champigny. Thank you. At 490, 489 and 491 Montauk Highway, which is just the property north of the, uh, the proposed uh, plan here. Um, so basically my, my house, my pool uh, would be facing um, I don't remember if it's lot one in the plan you uh, you presented, Wayne. Um, I, the one that is uh, the most north. So, what is the clearance between um, you know this property um, and the, the north property here, or all the way at the top of, of this view? On lot one, yes, you call it lot one on your side because it's on this view. It's hard to see um, the measurements on the um, and the clearance. So when, I don't know what you mean by clearance. So you're in our northeast, the the, the two lot subdivision. Um, Correct. And uh, so that the lot one, um, it's a flag lot, and uh, what's shown on the plan are uh, building envelopes that would be allowed by zoning. Um, and the building envelope for the principal dwelling could be as close as 20 feet um, from a side lot line. So that would be what would be allowed on that lot one. Okay, um, and and I'm not aware of the the, the zoning uh, rules here. Um, so what is the uh, the maximum height uh, that is allowed for the building? 
pretty uh, there is a maximum height like your house is 32 feet however there is a pyramid law requirement that requires uh, the height to be no greater than the side lot distance so if the, the party building the house here would want to be 20 feet from the line the maximum height at that point would be 20 feet of course for every foot the you know the house um, is set back that maximum height increases got it so that's why you normally see a sloping roof along such a setback got it thank you very much uh, that is my, my only question here okay thank you any other questions anyone else in the waiting room i see none you see none okay any other questions from the board i'll move to close dennis uh moving to close with a 30-day written comment period seconded by john all in favor aye opposed abstention seven in favor Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Thank Are you. you here? You're here for number four as well. I'm going to observe. Lisa will be presenting. Okay. Number four, Blessing Fields. Uh, we have proper notice. Kathleen? We do, Madam Chair. Yes. Thank you. Jackie, you're reading into the record? Yes. Please take notice that in accordance with the Governor's Executive Order number 202.1, a pre-submission conference will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, July 9th, 2020 at 6 p.m. via video conferencing to consider the pre-submission application entitled Blessing Fields, LLC. The application proposes the demolition of two existing buildings and the construction of one two-story, 2,180-square-foot building with a total floor area of 6,540 square feet to be utilized for office uses and one two-story 4,000 square foot building with a proposed floor area of 6,000 square feet to be utilized for two special trade contractor uses with associated parking and cross access along the southern portion of the property. Serving the properties to the east and the west all on a 49,554 square foot parcel located with the Highway Business Zoning District located in the hamlet of Hampton Bays at 163 West Montauk Highway, Suffolk County tax Map number 900-222-1-12. A transcript of said hearing will be provided at a later date and, a and the public hearing will have an opportunity to see and hear the meeting live and to provide comments. The public can watch the live meeting on the town clerk's website under the planning board meeting tab or participate through the Zoom app. If any interested members of the public would like to provide comments on the public hearing, comments can be submitted to the planning board via mail, email, or uploaded to the town clerk's portal prior to the meeting, where additional and updated information on ways to view and participate will be posted. In addition, the record will remain open after the public hearing for the submission of the written comments. Please check the July 9th, 2020 meeting agenda posted on the town clerk's website as the hearing date approaches for further instructions on how to access the virtual meeting and for any updated information. In the event of cancellation of this meeting, this application without further notice will be heard at the next planning board meeting. Jackie LaFaro, chairperson, by order of the planning board of the town of Southampton, Philip Keith, secretary. Thank you, Jackie. Lisa, you, can you unmute? Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Hi, thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Jackie. Lisa Poyer with InterScience on behalf of the applicant. Um, as Jackie had read into the record, the property is located at 163 West Montauk Highway in Hampton Bays. It's located on the south side of Montauk Highway, directly at the light for Macy's. Jackie, I don't know if you're going to pull the beat. Thank you. So it's known as the Macy's Light, and our driveway is a narrow driveway right now, but it does connect with the light itself. The property to the west is the Riverhead Building Supply property, and the property directly to the east is the, what is it, the Peconic, I'm sorry, Quag Sinclair Fuel. And then you have a real estate office, Rapid Recovery, and the former Hampton Bay's Diner further to the east. Uh, beyond the Riverhead Building Supply building to the left, you have the facility known as the garage, the self-storage facility, and the beverage distributor. So the property is located in a true highway business zone. There's other businesses in the area. The property goes back all the way to the train tracks. Uh, it's 49,554 square feet. Right now, the existing uses on the property, um, it's a vacant use for part of the office in the front 
and there's a special trade contractor on the site right now known as spring and summer activities. The owners are looking to demolish both of the buildings and to construct two new structures on the lot. The existing building in the front is used, used to be a former model home and it was an L-shaped building and that's what caused the restriction for the driveway and it's only about 10 feet wide at the narrowest point there. The new proposed building will be rectangular in shape and it will allow that driveway to be widened to 24 feet wide. The front building will be 2,180 square feet and it'll be a dimension of approximately 31 feet by 70 feet. There'll be two floors and a full basement in that building. The building in the back, which is about 350 feet set back from Montauk Highway, it will be 4,000 square feet on the first floor, 2,000 square foot mezzanine, and the dimensions will be approximately 25 feet by 160 feet. If you compare that to the Riverhead Building Supply building next door, their building dimensions are 240 feet by about 120. So it'll be significantly smaller than the RBS building. And the face of our front building will also be set back about half the distance of the RBS building for the rear structure. The applicant has worked uh, with the planning staff ahead of time and they've listened to the design criteria for the Hampton Bays Hamlet study. While they're not in the area, they're still taking some of the architecture from it and they're doing more of a maritime mercantile look for the two structures. As this is a pre-application conference, I'm just here to listen to see if the board or public has any questions on the application. What proposed uses again, Lisa? Uses. Uh, I'm sorry, they're gonna do two special trade contractors and two office uses, which are both allowed for the lot area by code. Okay, there's cross access in the rear. They are proposing to allow cross access in the rear um, with regards to the four, potential good ground road connection. Great, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Charles, is there someone in the waiting room? I'm looking. Nope. No one? No one with a hand. Okay. It's a, certainly a better development of the property. Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, and the applicants are willing to work with the board and uh, we feel that it's a good design for the property. It looks great. Yeah. Much nicer. Quite nice. Much a big improvement. From what's there. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not uh, hard. <laughs> no other questions or comments. I'll ask for a motion to close right. the 30 day written comment period. Motion by Glorian, sec, uh, second by Robin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstention, seven in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. And um, I'll entertain a motion to close. Motion to close. Dennis, uh, and then second by Phil. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstention, seven in favor. We are finished.